Hello everyone, this is Orlando from A Collector's Dream. And today, I have a truly special card. This will be my last pickup of the year. And it's a card that um, actually went up for auction uh, a while back and then it just happened to come back for auction in the REA auction. And essentially, I bought it for the same price that it came out before. And um, I'm going to share this rare card and I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about it. But, um, you know, first of all, here's the card. It's a 19, you're, you're never gonna see this card again. I think this may be the only one that exists. 1922, Romeo and Julieta Cigars, Eliodoro Hidalgo. Eliodoro Hidalgo is a uh, Hall of Fame, uh, Cuban Hall of Fame player. I'll tell you a little bit more about him. This card is in the CSG. There are no PSA cards or PSA. Uh, there's nothing in the PSA registry for this set, for this card, for any card in this set. As far as I know, from all the reading that I've done, there's just a handful of these cards that have been found. And this was in the Richard Merkin collection. Jim Merkin was one of the uh, top Cuban collectors and he had the rarest cards. And I'll show you in a minute, but this is uh, from the Almandares team, which was the best team in Cuba. And Hidalgo won, uh, I think it was five, six championships, Cuban championships, along with uh, Almeida was on the team and uh, some other champions. And uh, he was a center fielder. And you'll never see this card, it's extremely rare. I keep saying that, but, but this, is, this is for, I'm gonna read a little bit about uh, these cards and the best I, to my knowledge and after the research. This, this says 1915. But these cards were actually created in 19, uh, these stats actually are from the 1911 season. And it says here, uh, H. Hidalgo, you don't pronounce the H, but Hidalgo, Abuco, that's his uh, other name or nickname, center field, Ramendares. And I'll, I'll explain that 1915 area there. Is a 19, this should say 1911. And uh, there's his batting average. J, it means the uh, games. So his average uh, and hits. And they didn't play a lot of games for Amandaris because these players back in these days, they played in other leagues. They even came to the United States to play in the Negro Leagues, even back then. And Hidalgo started playing in 1902. And he played in the dead ball era in Cuba also. And it came from the Roman Julieta Cigars. So I'm going to just kind of read a little bit about this card here. And this comes from the original, not from the REA, but from the uh, the Hicks auction. That This particular card, when they auctioned off the collection of Richard Burke, and, and um, they talked about these cards. And one of the cards that they sold off in that, was one of the most expensive cards and that was the Jose Mendez card and this is what the Jose Mendez card looked like see same thing and they sold that card it's the only Hall of Famer in that set and that card went for uh, $19,000 so um, yeah, what, what I, I, Dylan probably wants to know what I paid for that. And you can look it up in the REA. Um, it was $1,400 and came out to about $1,500 after it, the thing is. And how did I pay for that? I'll show you real quick. As you know, I'm retired, so I gotta, you gotta sell something to buy something, guys. That's the way it goes. So when I was at the National, the cards that I didn't sell, I dropped them off at the uh, Love of the Game auction. 
and they've, they've already sold at the Love of the Game auction. And uh, these are the cards I sold. Let me go back. So these are the cards I sold. So I got that from my sales at the, uh, thank you for consigning to Love of the Game auction. So that's my, uh, I got about 2,400 bucks from the uh, one, two, three, four, five cards that I sold at REA. And from that, I mean, I was able to, I mean, from Love of the Game, and I was able to pick this up at the REA auction. So, so that's, because uh, I know Dylan from Double D always wants to know what I'm paying for these cards. I don't like to say it, but you know, that's, it is what it is. But, um, and that's how I got it. So that, that explains, it shows you a little bit how my collection is built. Sell some, buy some, stuff like that. So a little bit about this, you know, since uh, Romeo and Julieta issued examples of boxing cards from the 1920s and have long been known to be documented, although several series were produced during this time period. Uh, it says that, uh, let's see. Uh, sorry, guys, I'm just trying to read some of this thing. It says, well, both the 1909 Cabanas and 1910 Punch Merkin collections garner a lot of attention. Uh, it says, Shroudery and Mystery for many years have been these Merkin collection Romeo and Julieta cards. Each is one and a half by two and a half with glossy silver gelatin photo fronts, so the actual photo fronts. Further adding to the allure of these ama amazing relics is the fact that all of the known professional card backs include a date of either 911 or 915, or, I mean 1911 or 1915, along with statistical information for various this is 1915, along with uh, statistical information for various baseball performance categories, while their amateur counterparts display a date of 1922. So these are professional ones. So this is when matching up the stats with known records, it appears that all of the professional ball player cards backs should have read 1911, but were incorrectly printed with a 1915 date for unknown reasons. So it says that, um, you know, uh, further uh, adding to the intrigue of these amazing rarities is the fact that all of the known professional ball players hailed from the famed 1910-1911 Almandaris Ball Club with the Romeo and Julieta card photos matching those of the 1910 Punch series. One possible theory is that this baseball card series was originally planned for production as early as 1911, but the printing of the cards never took place or if they were issued quantities were so minuscule that no surviving examples have ever surfaced thus the tobacco company now had a stock of these Amandaris player photos on hand they had these uh, uh, Amandaris photos uh, were, oh, I kind of lost track there but I'll get back to it in a minute they had these these photos on hand so then they decided to, uh, to print them. So, so uh, Mandaris plays photos on hand and likely never followed through with actual production until 1922, when they produced an interesting mix of then current amateur ball players, these guys, no professional players from any other team besides Almondars have ever surfaced, making you know, the Mendes the only Hall of Famer. But, you know, uh, Hidalgo is in the Cuban Hall of Fame. Uh, so, you know, it just kind of says that uh, there, are, there aren't any known to exist. And as far as I know, uh, you know, that was the only Mendez card, and this is the only Hidalgo card. So I, I couldn't find it any, anywhere. I talked to the Cuban uh, guy, see if he knew, and he just told me that was a tremendous card and you know just uh, congratulations that he didn't he didn't have any he didn't know anything about it much about this series so that's kind of uh, what I found now as far as Hidalgo Hidalgo was just a uh, an awesome player and uh, you know it says here that uh, this this particular card in the REA uh, Description: A scarce example of the Cuban baseball legend Heliodoro Hidalgo 
from the circa 1922 Roman Julieta cigar series. Many of these images used for this set were also used in the equally elusive 1910 Punch Cigarros Cuban card issue. Over the last decade, only a handful of cards from this series have ever been offered publicly. The selection of known cards is made up of 1910-1911 Almendara's team that included Hidalgo, Jose Mendez, and several Cuban amateur ballplayers. That team is best remembered for playing against the Detroit Tigers while they were barnstorming in Cuba. Hidalgo was the center fielder and cleanup hitter for the Cuba, Cuban teams that toured in the United States, and he was elected to the Cuban Baseball Hall of Fame in 1943. So, and this card comes from the uh, esteemed Cuban and Negro League collector, Richard Merkin. So, I think from my research that this is a one of one, the only one known to exist for Hidalgo, and only a handful of these 1922 Romeo and Julieta cigar cards are known to exist. I don't like that they put this thing in this little baggie because it's got like the little lines here. It even has one in the, almost in the middle here, but it's not in the card. So, you know, I wish it was not in the baggie, but I'm not breaking this card out. You know, may end up seeing it, sending it just like that to SGC, see what they can do, but these holders are clear, but with the baggie is not very clear. And this thing here is kind of sticking to the baggie. And this is, you know, very, very rare, rare card, probably a one of a kind card. And, uh, you know, Hidalgo was one of the incredible players that actually played and he, he played in, in a lot of different places. Uh, he played, um, uh, and Almondar's team, you know, in those days when he started in 1901, that team was the, one of the best teams. And, uh, you know, he was the, the best player on that team. And then later he went on to play with uh, Rafael Almeida, who became a, uh, a major leaguer. And uh, even though he, he was the star of the team, he couldn't play in the major leagues. And he also played alongside some of the greatest uh, players like uh, Pete Hill. He played with Pete Hill. He was one of the uh, roommates or, or, or players that played with Pete Hill. Also a uh, Hall of Famer and uh, you know, in, in both the Cuban and American. So it was a lot of um, and, and players, you know, he played with uh, you know, Jose Mendez, of course. That was one of the biggest players of the time, if not the biggest players of the time. And, uh, you know, the center fielder for the, for the best team in Cuban baseball at that time. So um, he was just, uh, you know, Elidoro Hidalgo. That's the man. And he played for 15 years. And uh, when he came to play, and we'll just read a little bit about him here in the baseball reference, because he is in, in baseball reference. It says, uh, Hidalgo hit 252 and slugged 299 for Almondaris as they won another championship, 1913-1914, and, and they won all the way through. Uh, his notable outfield mates were uh, Armando Marsantz and Cristobal Torriente. So at that time, you know, he played with all the Cuban stars. And uh, Marsantz and, and, well, Torriente is in the uh, American Hall of Fame, played for uh, one of the best, possibly one of the best players of all time in Cuba. And in 1914-1915, Eliodoro batted 257 and slugged 292. He ended his career in 1915 and 1916 with two teams hitting 303 and a 357 slugging uh, percentage. He was inducted into the Cuban Hall of Fame. He was one of the group. In 1943, they started the Cuban Hall of Fame. And he was inducted uh, along with 20 other members of the Cuban Hall of Fame. He was one of the initial guys inducted into the Cuban Hall of Fame. And uh, you could see him, Eliodoro Hidalgo, Haruko, that was his uh, nickname, Amandaris. 
Again, this is 1915. I should have said series 1911. And then you see his batting average in 1911 was 257. Fielding average. They said he was a, uh, a smaller, speedy guy. He led the league in steals and, uh, you know, was just uh, one of these great players. He says in 1912, he, uh, you know, he started, he played 15 years. And uh, in 1912, he says that, uh, you know, he, uh, he um, that summer, he hit 400 in the U.S. and would have had the best average among top Midwestern black clubs had he qualified. He didn't have enough uh, at-bats, but he did play in the United States. He played in San Francisco, San Francisco League. And, um, you know, again, he came to the United States. He played great against the American players. He played great against Detroit. The Tigers, when they came to play in Cuba, and he played great when he came here. But in Cuba, he was not one of the top top players. He was, he wasn't one of the he was one of the best players. But you know, he was not compared to you know you can't compare him to a uh, you know Cristobal Torriente or a Pete Hill or a, or a Almeida or a Marsans or um, uh, a Mendez, of course. So, but anyway, probably. The rarest, one of the, the rarest card in my collection at this point, the 1922-23 Romeo and Julieta cigars, Eliodoro Hidalgo, Cuban Hall of Famer. His rarest card, and I can't find any more examples of this card. Looking through PSA, SGC, just haven't been able to find any anything. But anyway, guys. Wanted to share my last pickup uh, of the year. I've got a couple more videos I'm gonna put out here. Uh, and, um, you know, I'll, I'll catch you later with some more videos. So thanks for watching, guys. Truly, truly appreciate you um, watching and uh, learning a little bit about Cuban history and about uh, Eliodoro Hidalgo. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.